but we're about to get real for a second. Hey guys, it's Brooke, and today I am just doing kind of like a little music chit chat type video. And I've never really done a video like this before. I do my monthly favorites where I talk about stuff, but I just kind of felt like doing a casual video where I just kind of sit down and talk about a few topics. And I got my Diet Coke. I'm here to just, just chill. I'm in a hotel room. Your girl is sunburned once again in the same spot. Oh, actually, I think I was sunburned on my nose last time, but I also sunburned my chest the last time I was sunburned but I was wearing a sweatshirt in the video. But sunburnt again, because <laughs> I'm the whitest person on the planet. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Jack White's new album. Upon listening to this album the first time, I was like, what is he doing? And I... <laughs> I didn't want to say I didn't like it, and I did like some of it. Like, I liked some of the riffs, and there were two songs in particular, Respect Commander, and also um, Over and Over and Over, which I did really like. And there were a couple others that I liked parts of, but overall, the album as a whole, I was like, what is he doing? And, like, I pointed out, like, things that I did like about it, but I kind of didn't want to be like, I don't like this. Um, but I've never liked a full Jack White solo project. Like, there are songs on both Blunderbuss and Lazaretto that I don't listen to. So I was like, okay, this is normal. But the whole thing sounded kind of off for Jack White. And there was a lot of, like, spoken word poetry. And that, and there were a lot of just parts that, in my opinion, were incoherent and didn't make sense. Which, I mean, if you've heard some of... Jack White stuff, it doesn't always make sense. I mean, like, go listen to 16 Saltines. But anyway, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't fully understand, and a lot more electronic sounds, and chaotic, and I just didn't understand. And so I use a music app called Symbol, which I've talked about before. They're closing down soon. Um, my symbol is xbrook underscore Justina X, if you would like to follow me on there before it closes down. Um, and someone who I'm following on there posted, I think, Connected by Love and said, everyone share your opinions of the album. And I had already talked to this person about the album and we were both like, oh, we don't know how we feel. So I was going through and reading the other comments that people had left on his post. And this guy named George Phoebe, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, commented this on that post and I want to give him full credit for this analysis and this opinions because as someone who likes to analyze records and lyrics and the meanings behind albums especially concept albums I would be absolutely indignant if someone took something that I had come up with from an album and acted like they came up with it so that's not what I'm trying to do at all I'm literally reading direct quotes from this guy's comment and I have his permission to do so. Um, I did cut out a few parts of what he said, but this is the gist of it that I want to like cover in the video. But George said, just a week ago, I would have confidently proclaimed that Connected by Love is the worst song Jack White has ever laid to tape, which is a pretty bold statement given his two decade long career. Yet, despite Connected by Love being the album's opening song, it benefits from the context provided by Boarding House Reach so much that I can't even begin to understand the mindset that made me hate this song just one week prior. For a musician like Jack, who has consistently rejected new technologies throughout his career, still opting to record on a reel-to-reel -reel in the 21st century, and who has labeled technology as a destroyer of emotions and truth and art to release an album that is so heavy-handed with its electronic experimentation and themes of technology, dystopia, and corporatism is undoubtedly strange. However, when considering the role that technology plays across the record, both sonically and lyrically, it is clear that it isn't presented in a positive light. The album adopts advances in technology as means of critiquing them and the impact they have 
on humanity. In the case of the record's composition, the often disheveled and chaotic songwriting styles clearly emphasize the social dissonance and detachment from humanity. The sonic palette of a track like Hypermisophoniac, which Jack has stated was intended to be irritating, puts a spotlight not just on chaos and unrest resulting from technology, but also on monotony with the constant rising and falling electronic sound that's panned all the way through in the right ear. Elevates boarding house reach is the fact that White not only uses technology as a guise for commenting on humanity as a whole, like on Why Walk a Dog, but specifically his own humanity in a way that is admirably challenging and self-effacing at times, and is pretty cleverly spliced into several songs across the record. Boarding House Reach is such a satisfying release for me, because what seems like completely arbitrary experimentation at first turns out to be a calculated and well-coordinated exploration of a very defined set of themes out of which Jack extracts some genuinely interesting ideas. So yeah, that kind of blew my mind. And I heard all of that, and then I listened to the album again, and I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's what Jack actually had in mind when he wrote this stuff, but that makes a whole lot of sense and art is obviously up for its own interpretation and if you're interpreting it like that that's pretty freaking genius so if you're a fan of jack white even if you're not a fan of jack white i suggest you check out the white stripes and some of jack white's other projects and jack white's solo work i'm a huge fan of the lazaretto album um and check out this album keeping that th that thought in mind but I think with this album, like this album is not going to be an album that you sit here and you just want to listen to like the catchy songs off of. Like Lazaretto by Jack White, the album, the title track Lazaretto and Three Women and Would You Fight For My Love, songs like that, like I just will listen to on shuffle. But I feel like Boarding House Reach is an album that like doesn't, go down easy on shuffle like there are very few songs on it like the ones that i picked out um respect commander um over and over and over connected by love if you like it um i'm personally not a fan of it except for in the context of the record like george mentioned in what he wrote and i feel like there are very few songs like that that are like savable but that i'm saying in the context of spotify i feel like it's a record that if you want to, you know, hear that story or embrace that concept, then you go listen to that record. Because I don't know, like, like there's no way I would ever save that entire record, but I think it's kind of genius because like, I don't want those songs to come on shuffle, but like, I feel like I will go back and listen to that record and I'd probably buy that record on vinyl. That way you can kind of listen to it in order. And yeah, so. I thought that was kind of a genius outlook on it, and I don't know how many people watching are Jack White fans, but a lot of people are just like, is he just experimenting? Is What is he doing? And I feel like that is a brilliantly analyzed analysis of that album, and that really blew my mind and changed my perception on the entire body of work of that album. So, yeah. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the two or two of the upcoming concerts I'm going to. The first one being the Eagles. And if you watch my videos, I'm sure I've mentioned this many times that I was blown away when I found out that James Taylor and Jimmy Buffett were opening for Eagles. And I now find out that they're only opening for them on selected dates and James Taylor is doing some dates and Jimmy Buffett is doing some dates and it's only in like the large stadiums, which is not where I'm going. So I don't think I'm gonna be seeing either of them, which is a little bit depressing. I'm okay with that. I'm not a massive fan of either James Taylor or Jimmy Buffett, but I just wanted to see like, to be able to say I'd seen them and I do, 
love Come Monday by Jimmy Buffett. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. So I would have loved to have heard that live. And James Taylor, obviously songs like Fire and Rain. He has a song called Carolina in my mind that I really like. Um, stuff like that I would have really liked to have heard. Like I'm not like crying disappointed. Honestly, while I'm talking, I don't think I've ever told this in a video. The year was 2015. I was 14 years old. I had been obsessed with Lana Del Rey since I was 11 years old. And my brother, Zach, who introduced me to Lana, me and him decided we were going to go see Lana that summer. And she announced a tour that I was extremely excited about called the Endless Summer Tour with Courtney Love. And also, if you watch my videos, you probably know I freaking love Courtney Love and Kurt and Courtney and Hole and Nirvana and I was like this is a dream pairing Courtney and Lana and so I begged for those tickets me and my brother came up with a whole plan we somehow I forgot what it was for some holiday someone's birthday or something we ended up talking our dad into getting us the tickets for it and we were going and a week before the concert, I found out that Courtney had canceled the rest of the dates for the concert and Grimes was opening for Lana now. And this was before Grimes was really popular. And I was so indignant. I mean, like, I cried for like two or three days. Like, I was just, like, I still loved seeing Lana. That was still an amazing experience. We were in the general admission pit, and we're probably, like, sixth or seventh row, if you're, like, counting rows um, of the general admission. So that was a great experience. But, like, it would have been an even better experience if I had also been that close to Courtney Love, who I really wanted to see. I know she, like, I don't actually know why, she had to cancel. I'm sure it was for some kind of personal reason. So no disrespect to her, but I was devastated. That is not how I feel about this. I'm just like, oh, so I don't actually know who's going to open for them. There was something about Chris Stapleton opening for them, which kind of leads me into my next point. But first I'm going to talk about Taylor. So Taylor announced that Camila Cabello and Charlie XCX are opening for her on the Reputation Tour, which I'm also going to in August. And that's really exciting. I'm really excited to see Camilla, even though the only songs that I really know by her, or the only song that I really like know and like by her is Havana, which I know is her like basic one single. So I tried to listen to her full album once and I wasn't really into it, but like this is one thing where I'm like reaching out, like please tell me what songs I should listen to to try to get farther into Camilla's music or, you know, be more um, exposed to her music before I see her. And also, I know literally nothing by Charlie XCX except for um, Fancy with Iggy Azalea, which I highly doubt she's going to play. So if you like any songs by either of those people, please, please, comment to help me get started because even if people aren't my favorite if I see them live I like to know something by them it makes it more enjoyable and the next thing I'm feeling talking about is I'm gonna call it genre stereotyping but it's more so the idea of limiting yourself to listening to one genre and I was like this for a long time. I mean, when I first got into music, I liked pop music, which is how most people of my age and my generation are because that's what's popular. And I grew up listening to a lot of stuff. Um, my mom listened to a lot of alternative music when I was little. Um, I grew up her hearing pop and rap on the radio. My grandparents listened to like old time rock and roll and country. So I had influences of a lot of things. And if you look at my music taste now, that's a lot of, if not the majority of what I like now, even though I didn't, you know, realize it then that kind of has integrated itself into what I like now. But 
when I like really started getting into my own music taste and I kind of got into my Tumblr, Nirvana, grunge, prestige, um, phase and then followed by my emo phase, I, you know, there tends to be a stigma that other types of music, such, especially country, country gets hit repeatedly, um, especially country and especially hip hop. Um, like people just automatically look down on and I was like that for a long time and there have always been a few country songs that I've liked that I've just like grown up hearing like popular radio songs like Carrie Underwood, um, Miranda Lambert songs. I mean I have grown up in the deep south so I'm familiar with a lot of stuff. Country has never been my absolute favorite like even as a kid the only like country artist who I like really looked up to was Taylor Swift, which hasn't changed and she's not even a country anymore. So, but yeah, I felt like for a long time, I really hated anything to do with country. But I feel like in the last like year or so, I realized that like country as a genre itself is still not my favorite, may never be one of my favorites, but it has influenced so much of what music is now. And rock and roll, as described by Mick Fleetwood, and I mean Fleetwood Mac is my favorite band, is country and blues put together. And so many of my favorite bands of all time, I mean Fleetwood Mac is my favorite band of all time, and Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham were pretty much country when they joined Fleetwood Mac. Um, the Beatles are my second favorite band. They, you know, they, you know, had came from Britain, so there weren't as much, but they do have songs that have a little bit of that feel to it. Um, Eagles are my third favorite, which they pretty much started out being country and progressed more into modern rock. So, and I made the last video I put out, not the last video I put out, but one that I put out two or three videos ago where I was showing these CDs that my grandfather gave me that I'm trying some out and a lot of them are more old classic country people who he likes and who I've grown up listening to with him and I like a lot of that music. I haven't gone through all of them yet um, but I like a lot of that music and there's like a Luke Bryan song that's out right now that I like and I have on my playlist and I was listening to my April playlist, which I've already started doing because I, you know, put all the songs, even if I just hear something once and I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Or I hear something from my library that I've known for years and I'm like, oh, I want to listen to this more. You know, like I make my monthly playlist and put songs into it. And normally I have like a hundred songs in that playlist. And then I pick out my favorites, the ones that I kept coming back to and didn't skip and really loved and I put them in my monthly favorites at the end of every month and so I have a lot of music from those CDs and from more country artists who that have made their way in there and it was like I saw I opened my Spotify the other day and it was like and you know they have like the recommendation sections especially if you use Spotify or Spotify Premium and it was like more like April 2018 and it was like modern country um this is Willie Nelson this is Carol King and like all this stuff and I was like what but I was like you know so many of those people influenced people that I love and there's nothing shameful about any of those people just because they like made country music and there's nothing shameful about country music now it might not be everyone's cup of tea there are you know country songs that are especially that are modern that I think are not good um Every once in a while, I like a song that I agree is not good. <laughs> like, Strip That Down by Liam Payne and Quavo. That song, that is not a well-written song. That's an extremely generic song. Not good, but I love that song just to, like, jam out to. And that has happened to me before with country songs because I'm surrounded by people who love them. And sometimes songs are just fun to listen to and don't have to be super serious. Even though I'm a firm believer in art through music, music can also be fun. And 
it can be artistic and be fun. It just depends. But basically what I'm trying to say is don't limit yourself into one category and feel like if you stray away from it that you're disappointing people or not being yourself. Be unique and like what you like because in all honesty, most people like different blends of music and some people don't and if you like literally just like I'm not saying you have to go like country music or you have to go like rap music but I'm saying if you find anything that you enjoy listening to that is out of your comfort zone don't be ashamed of it or feel ashamed of it and I I don't know I just feel very strongly about this and I feel like I'm gonna put out my April favorites video and it's gonna be like a lot of more country folk stuff and people are gonna be like but I'm trying to work on like even with myself not being ashamed of that like just love what you love and it's not a lot of it is not even that far off from what you already like like some people act like there's this huge difference between loving a lot of classic rock people and loving a lot of country people and there's not because so many of them were influenced and I mean even modern people um you know Jack White's Lazaretto I've heard people say they don't like because it's too country um freaking Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day did the Foreverly album covering Everly Brothers songs which was a rather country feel of an album and it it doesn't it's not shameful and the same thing goes with rap I'm not as strong on that there's a lot of um concepts in rap music that I don't like um the way that women are discussed in some cases not everyone but I do like certain people like Kendrick Lamar who I featured in several of my recent videos which I feel like has felt out of place on my channel but that's what I like and it is okay to be diverse and it is okay to try different stuff to see what's out there it's okay to listen to stuff and not like it it's okay to listen to an alternative person who everyone else loves and say I don't like this so you know I just I just feel very strongly about that and I'm trying to work on that with myself about not just be about because if you just if you're just honest about one thing that you like but you kind of keep everything else over here in a little box you're not really being yourself you're just being part of yourself and I think that everyone should be their whole self and love themselves for who they are and so that is what I am trying to do and I'm just trying to be honest not only with my viewers but with myself. I'm not saying I'm going full on country and that I'm going to start posting videos about Florida Georgia Line every five seconds. That's not what I'm gonna do. Um, that's not me but I'm saying you know I can like songs by these people. I can be influenced and inspired by some of these people. Um, once again, I'm not saying that's like my favorite genre. It's it's really not. But I'm trying not to be ashamed to even be associated with it, if that makes sense. Which also kind of leads into the next point, which is my final point, and that is Record Store Day 2018. And I have been saying since I started my channel that I'm going to Record Store Day, and I may not be now because first of all, I have no money. Second of all, I the I'm in a play right now and we have practices every Saturday starting pretty early in the morning and I'm like the main female lead so I can't miss any of those and yeah I don't know if I'm actually gonna get to go to record store day <laughs> but um, my friend Murray who I did a video with I'll link our collaboration in the description my friend here on YouTube, she did a video with her boyfriend talking about the stuff she wanted from Record Store Day, which inspired me to go look at the 2018 RSD list. And man, there is so much good stuff. And I'm just going to kind of talk about like the stuff that I want. I'm going to try to track down a few of these things, even if I don't go myself. Um, but there's just a lot of good stuff. And that's going to be the final thing that I talk about. 
So one of the things that I'm like, I don't really like actually need this, but like if I had the money I would get is the Fleetwood Mac Tango in the Night alternate version. And I love Tango in the Night as an album. I actually don't have the original album on vinyl, which is like, why would you get the alternate if you don't have the actual album? But I mean, obviously you can do what you want, but <laughs> that's like not something that I need. Like I'm not gonna spend $25 on that. I just am like, oh yeah, Fleetwood Mac, give me that. And next kind of goes into what I said, a modern country pop song that I really like and I think is really well written is Heartbreak by Lady Annabellum, and they're releasing a red seven inch single of that and I'm I really want that seven inch single just because I like that one song like I probably would not buy their whole album to listen to the one song in which case I think it's you know very useful to have the seven inch so you can listen to the one song that's kind of the point and yeah and then there is a 12 inch single of Take It to the Limit, which is an Eagles song, but it's just sung by Randy Meisner, who was the original singer of that song when the Eagles came out with it. And I don't have an album that has that song on it. And I love that song with Randy Meisner's voice. Um, Timothy Schmidt, who replaced Randy in the band, he does a good job singing it too but nothing quite beats Randy's version of it. And so I would like that. That's not like a priority either. None of those three things are really a priority, um, except I really would like the Lady Annabellum one. Um, but those are just things that I picked out and I was like, is the one thing, the if I had to pick one, and it is the one thing that I am like, I absolutely have to have this. And once again, it's country, but this is not going to be a shock for me. It is Taylor Swift's first album, her self-titled album, which before I've said that I don't like all of, and there are songs on it that I don't really care about, but it still has so many good ones on it and so many that introduced me to her. And I do overall love that album. And even if every song is not my favorite and they, it's art, it's been pressed on vinyl. I just don't have it. They are pressing it on teal blue vinyl. What? What? And the cover is blue and it's just, it's just, I have to have that. So I will hurl all of the money that I have at that. Even if I have to pay more than it's worth on eBay for it later. Then also they're releasing her album Fearless on gold vinyl, which I would also really like, but I know I'm not gonna have the money for that either. Um, and that's really cool. And I would love to have that album on gold vinyl. First of all, the gold theme just goes with the colors of the album. I feel like just have, come in, come in. So I feel like having that would be really cool. No, I'm not gonna get this because I just got this album in December on Standard Flat, but they're releasing a pink copy of 1989. And I'm just like, that's literally a dream come true. I just, <laughs> I want that so bad, but I don't need it and I can't afford it. And I can guarantee with Taylor Swift, these albums are gonna be like $40 each, so. That's not gonna happen, but pink, hot pink, 1989, that's beautiful. Why are they not releasing red on red vinyl? If they were releasing red on red vinyl, even though I already have the black vinyl, I probably would make myself buy that. Maybe I should make myself buy the pink. I don't have any money, what am I talking about? And put Speak Now on like purple, like, why why did why are we they just doing these albums but anyway i want all of these albums that they're doing so it's fine i still don't have reputation on vinyl i literally have like 75 cents in my bank account i don't know what i'm talking about but yeah so the next thing is another thing that i want but i probably won't end up getting because of my insufficient funds and that is courtney barnett um a sea of split peas ep and it's going to be on two separate picture discs and i love courtney barnett and i would love to have that once again probably not going to happen but yeah 
another thing, which is the second thing, like the two things that I'm like, I really, really want these are the blue Taylor Swift self-titled vinyl and the Led Zeppelin yellow seven inch, just to kind of have as like a collector's thing. Like obviously, like, <laughs> like it's not the same case as the Lady Annabellum where I'm like, oh, I really, really, need to have this just to listen to this one song I just like want to have this thing which is how a lot of people are on record store day but this is the Led Zeppelin 7 inch of friends with rock and roll on the b side and it's going to be pressed on bright yellow vinyl and I want that so bad if someone very rich is watching this and would just like to send me that in the Taylor Swift album that would be awesome I'm just kidding don't don't send the last thing that I really would like is the Niall Horan Mirrors EP, which is an EP that he's releasing exclusively for Record Store Day and pressing on vinyl, which I also really want. But I'm pretty sure he's putting that out for streaming afterwards. If not, I'm going to be very upset. Does anyone know if he's putting it out for streaming afterwards? Because if he's not, I'm going to have to get that too. Speaking of Niall Horan, the reason that I'm in a hotel room right now is because I am in Augusta, Georgia for the Masters. And I'm pretty sure that I was here at the exact same time as Niall because he was here on Saturday and we didn't go to the golf course on Saturday, but he posted a picture with the sign and we were there on Sunday and I thought that he had posted that picture while I was there. And I was literally about to never get up out of the floor screaming because I was like, because I walked all over that place. I'm like, there's no way that man was there and I didn't see him. But I do think that he was there on Saturday in which it was not open to the public. So I feel better now. Oh, could have met Niall. Didn't. We were probably very close to each other at the same time, though. He could be staying in this hotel. Heck if I know. Probably not because this is where everyone who's going to the Masters is staying, but yeah, so that was just a random music chit chat video about some things I wanted to talk about and felt like talking about, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I'm sorry, um, but yeah, I will link my other videos and comment and just comment whatever. Comment and tell me what you think of what I said. Comment and tell me what you want from Record Store Day. Um, Comment if you want my PayPal to send me money to buy those records. Comment and tell me just, just, I don't know. Just let me know what's going on with you. And yeah, bye guys. I'll link my Harry Styles Whale Challenge video and also my March Favorites playlist, which I just did. And also the CD haul that I did, which I referenced in this video. And I will link my Symbol account. And once again, check out George Phoebe, who's the person who I got all of that input on Jack White from. And bye, guys. I hope you all have a good day.